Welcome to Formula Drift Insider, I'm Ryan Sage. With this year's final event upon us, we focus now on its legendary venue and speak to Rookie of the Year contender, Ryan Cotto. Home to arguably the best battles in Formula Drift history and a friend to drifting since the sport arrived from Japan almost 10 years ago, Toyota Speedway at Irwindale has become known as the House of Drift. In this segment, we talk to the drivers and get their take on the finale of the year and the infamous banked ovals of this high impact course. Oh, Irwindale, I mean, it's the House of Drift. Yeah, the House of Drift. I mean, there's many names for it, you know, but yeah, Irwindale's legendary in America already. Irwindale, I mean, House of Drift. Irwindale is the House of Drift. I, dude, I love Irwindale, man. It's packed house, last round, everyone just putting it all out on the table. People are just gunning for the win. You know, I think everybody's gonna just drive hard. It's the last event, they're changing the track a little. I won the 2005 USA versus Japan. 2007 World Championship, I won my first Formula D there, and I wrapped up my championship there last year. So, to me, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, I used to joke around saying it was my house because I, I definitely run good there every year. I love bouncing off the walls there, and uh, it's just a good course to attack. And it's a gnarly track. It's scary as hell. It's fast, and you know, we're drifting on this bank like I don't know how many degrees, but it's like this. We're pretty much just looking down, and we're going 80 miles an hour right next to a wall. We're like this close to a wall, so. Uh, it'll definitely split the boys from the men. We get the most spectators out there. We get a lot of spectators, a lot of fans, and all our friends always go out there. So it's good, you know. It's like the battleground. That's like the the home turf for drifting in America. You know, we usually have um, pretty new faces on the podium uh, because just people just throwing it all out, and you know, you usually get a new face up there. In the years past, it's been the best crowd that we've ever had every single year. It's like the there's this weird energy, you're in this, it's almost like stadium style, you know what I mean? You can see everything going on, the action's crazy, the walls, everybody drives so hard in that lower bank wall, it's insane. You just think everybody's going to wreck all the time, so it's exciting and it's awesome. And uh, I think we'll see a lot of, a lot of good stuff there. Uh, it's one of my favorite tracks. I'm expecting to do good there myself, so, you know, I don't want to uh, jinx myself, but it's, I love that track. and. Uh, Arvindale is one of my favorite tracks, um, and if I can keep leading a championship going to the last round in uh, Arvindale, it's not going to be easy, but I think there's a lot of chance that I can take the win and I can take the championship as well. As an FD Insider fan, you're now one of the first to know that Formula Drift has confirmed the track configuration change noted in an earlier episode, and we now have the layout preview for you at FormulaDrift.com. Three outstanding rookies who hit the scene this year, Walker Wilkerson, Otis Bacchus, and Ryan Cotto, have instantly become stars in the Formula Drift lineup. We take a look now at Cotto, who shows us no matter how small your budget, dedication and perseverance are what add up to real achievement. My name is Ryan Cotto. I'm 19 years old from Sacramento, California. Uh, I got into drifting when I was 12 years old. I saw a video on the internet of some Japanese guys drifting and it just I just got hooked on it instantly. Um, you know, at the time I couldn't really try it out. I was only 12 years old, I didn't have a license, I didn't have a car. Uh, so I just got into it, you know, watching videos, reading the magazines, you know, I was drifting the RC cars, the go-karts, really just trying to get my hands on anything I could that was related to drifting. And when I turned 16, I got my license. I got my first car, it was a Nissan 240SX, and I uh, just started drifting it. In the, went from there. This is my rookie year in Formula Drift. Uh, I'm driving my Nissan 350Z with a Titan V8. Uh, as a rookie, every track for me is a new experience. Uh, all the rounds are new and it's really cool being able to drive with a lot of the drivers that I looked up to as I was coming through the ranks of Pro-Am. Uh, and they've all been really cool to me and all the other rookies as well. It's definitely a fun experience. My driving style I feel is somewhat unique. Uh, amongst the other Formula D drivers. There's no one driver that I really tried to emulate as I was coming up, but I did start drifting uh, competitively in a Hachiroku 1986 Corolla, and I feel like I've carried that style with me throughout my whole career of just flicking the car as hard as I can. Um, so I'd say my style most uh, closely represents that of uh, the old school Japanese Corolla drivers. Budget is definitely a, a big role in, in being able to be successful in Formula Drift, but the way that the sport is going, you definitely do not need to have huge amounts of money to be able to come up through the ranks and become a Formula D driver. 
Uh, we've got some great examples like Matt Powers and Chris Forsberg. Both of those guys came from just a pure grassroots drifting level of just going out on weekends and driving for fun. You know, just through it, like exceptional driving skill and dedication, that's all you need to really come up to the top level. I feel that, you know, being young and being a rookie, it would be easy for someone to see that, you know, I could be taken not very seriously, like, oh, this kid doesn't know what he's doing or he's not going to be a threat. But I feel like these drivers are mature enough and have enough experience to know that you can't ever really tell how someone's going to, you know, do as far as how competitive they're going to be and how hard they're going to bring it. So this year, uh, specifically, Walker and myself are both pretty young and, and we're both rookies, but, you know, we're trying to show these guys that we're here to compete. And that's a wrap for this week. For a look at what's next, we give you the professional hot chick, Marcella. Thanks, Ryan. Next week, an Irondale Speedway special, plus highlights from the Formula Drift Awards Banquet. As always, you can like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and email comments or suggestions to insider at formulad.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll drift back to you next week.